All right, so we're heading into recovery Thursday. Typically means that we're going for a longer piece, higher volume. We are not looking to mash the pedal to the ground, right? When we think about this intensity piece, recovery Thursday is really designed to work at 50 to 60% of your all out sprint. So controlling your heart rate. Another way, right, if you've got an Apple Watch or a Fitbit or any of those kind of pieces of equipment, I will pay attention a lot to the heart rate. On a recovery day, I'm gonna try and keep myself at 140 or lower. Um, typically, if I'm gonna to try to like redline it, I'm in that 165 and above, right? I'm um, probably into that like 180 and above. Um, so just give you some idea of what recovery Thursday is really designed for. Kicking off today with those 10 belly breaths, right? Well, those are something that we just want to have in our toolbox to set our intention. There's a lot of chaos going on. We just want to get ourselves in a mindset where the next 30 to 45 minutes is about us. Yes, I get it. We're probably still managing toddlers, um, possibly dogs, right? I put my dog outside and my son is on a walk with my mother-in-law. So perfect time to take this video. Once we've done that 10 belly breaths, we're going to head out the door for a 400 meter run. Um, some of you have some equipment at home, so we could bike. Um, we could also do a 500 meter row um, if you were fortunate enough to either get one of Coca's or you have your own. From there, we're gonna go straight into our workout. So today's workout is a hero workout. Joshua, right? I believe it is. Uh, Jordan, I don't know. I'll look it up before I post it. Wanna make sure I get that right. 100 kettlebell swings. At home, I don't currently have a kettlebell. I do, however, have a 20 pound dumbbell. If you are like me and all you have is a dumbbell, we can come in and hold that head of the dumbbell. I wouldn't recommend doing full swings. From here, my feet are gonna be in that squatting position, so heels just outside of the hips. We wanna make sure that we're using our hip as our hinge. So as the chest comes forward, hips go back, we're gonna get a soft bend in the knee. So we wanna avoid letting the hip come too low, which shouldn't be a squatting movement, but instead a hinging movement. As we come through, we're gonna snap through the hip, making sure that we open up the hip before we pull with the hands. If we had a kettlebell, our goal is to go all the way up overhead. Um, some people, um, if you go back in our history, um, have made a sandbag. You can use a sandbag again, going just that half swing to that Russian. So 100 in total. Once we've completed 100 kettlebell swings, we're going to go into 100 sit-ups. Now, I wanted to show you guys just a simple, easy way to make an ab mat at home. It's not perfect, but if you just take a standard bathroom towel, you're gonna fold it in half, and then we fold it in half again. I'm gonna go essentially kind of two thirds, right, of the way down, and then fold that over again. So it'll make it a little bit higher on one side, a little bit lower on the other, very minimally, but every little bit helps. But we're just gonna come in with that one side for our sit-ups. It's gonna go, let me see if I can scoot back and get in the frame a little here. But it's gonna go right where the glute and the floor meet. From there, we'll come all the way down into that lower back. If you don't like the way it is, we can fold it again and come through. But we're just looking to support the lower spine. Um, a couch pillow works great too for those. We're then gonna go into 100 air squats. No load needed for this, right? Again, we're doing recovery Thursday higher volume, less weight, heels outside of the hips. Big priority here is making sure that the weight stays rooted in our heels. Now, when we root in our heels, that doesn't mean that the toes come off of the ground. So we still want the full foot in touch or in contact with the floor. If you're at home like me, kick the shoes off, start paying attention to what your feet are doing to brace yourself to the ground. But as we go down, ideally we're gonna get hip creasing the knee, coming back to that full standing position. Again, when we talk about the depth, we're looking for hip creasing knee, and then back to that full standing position. A lot of times when we have high volume squats, we can let that chest come forward, and then we never really fully open. So we wanna make sure that we finish each rep as well. From there is gonna be the kicker, which is 100 push-ups, which I know is gonna be my downfall. So, instead of starting on the ground, because I know I'm not gonna get more than 30 to 40 really solid push-ups, I am gonna go elevate my hands. So I've got my son's train table here, just a standard height train table. 
Now this will put some of the weight in my feet, allowing me to keep a straight body position still, but it's gonna allow me to get through that volume in a efficient way without worming through that midline. If you are looking to break it up more, totally get it, a hundred of one thing can be very daunting. If we wanna break it up, take it into sets of 20. So we've got four movements, 20 reps each, five rounds in total. So it's another way of just breaking up the monotony. That does not mean that you should move faster, right? We still want to stay in this 50 to 60% output because it's a recovery Thursday. My goal is to put together a mobility session as well. And it may be something that I do on Zoom. I was talking about doing it last week and I didn't. Um, so look for that in your inbox for our Coca Peeps. Um, we'll get together and just do a nice relaxing Zoom session um, yeah, if you have any questions, as always, let me know. Either uh, email me, cococrossfit at gmail, um, or reach out to me directly, text, phone call, 440-724-6587, and we'll see you guys on Friday.